Hello there, friends. Can you see me? Can you hear me? Can you sense me? <laughs> How are you all today? I can't see any comments, but I'll wait for... Oh, there she is. Hey, TM. <laughs> hey, Tammy. Lovely to see you. <laughs> Welcome to this enchanting and beautiful forest. Well, I'm looking forward to meandering through here with you and not only exploring its beauty, but just appreciating the, 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 the nature and the, uh, the enchanting component of this forest. So thank you so much for being here with me. Hey, Suzanne, lovely to see you. Hey, Mary Lou. Hey, Catherine. Hey, Abe. G'day, Stephanie. G'day, Natalie. Nice to see you all. So we'll, uh, you know, without further ado, let's begin uh, very shortly. I want to thank you all and welcome you here. I don't know if you can see, but it's cold. It's freezing, uh, which is beautiful. It's, it feels fresh and it feels nice. And yeah, it's definitely better than the alternative, which is when it's hot. Great to see you again, Beth. Thanks for being here. Hey, Robin, lovely to see you. So let's switch the camera. Let's let's jump into it. Let's let's enjoy. Uh, as long as you can hear me and as long as you can see, uh, we're we're up for a great experience. And if you want to, this will last for about 45-ish minutes. And if you want to, after it, we're going we're going to um, um, enjoy a nice short meditation in the midst of this forest, uh, soaking in the sound, uh, the sounds of the birds and the animals and and nature. So hopefully you can join us for that as well. Uh, let's let's switch the camera, and here we are. Redwood Forest. I was uh, I had a few ideas of how I'd like to navigate through this this experience what angle and approach I'd like to take, whether I'd like to tell you a story or play you some music along the way. And then I, I realized how beautiful the sound, the natural sound of the birds is. So I thought, let's just enjoy this for a moment. And then uh, maybe at some point we can listen to some music. Uh, but what I, in terms of content, what I'd like to explore with you today is the idea of how we can, as people, as, as humans, uh, philosophically relate to the redwood forest and how, what kind of beauty and meaning can we extract from, from this beautiful place. And as we step deeper into this forest, it gets quieter and the sounds of the birds become more more distinguishable. Yes, Michelle, this was initially and originally part of a project to bring redwoods into Melbourne. They, at the time, believed that Melbourne possessed ideal climates for redwood, coastal climates, which is true in a sense, but um, the project fell apart and they just kept their forests here and now we have this beautifully symmetrical redwood forest here in Melbourne. One of the things I love the most about redwood forests is what I'm about to show you now, the angles that you can take. Look at this. Firstly, just look at how tall these things are. It's quite mesmerizing, isn't it? So they're about a hundred meters tall, which is quite remarkable. Before we start delving into the philosophical significance of the redwoods, I just want you to enjoy the sound for birds.
and honestly there is no no sound no melody is more soothing than that of nature and in this instance the birds that are occupying the spirit of this forest Why don't we, as we be proceed deeper into this forest, discuss the, I don't know, the life lessons that we can extract from these ancient magical trees, phenomenons really. Firstly, when I look at these trees, I think a lot about the power of resilience and growth. You know, these trees, these redwoods, unlike many other trees in, in our world, have stood the test of time. You know, they've, redwoods in general, and, and these trees as well, have weathered storms, fires, especially in this area. They're very resilient to fires. They've, uh, we've gone through droughts here in Melbourne, and... I must say that the resilience from these trees is all inspiring in so many ways. And it reminds us of our own capacity to withstand the challenges of life. And it really does inspire us as well. And, you know, just as these trees stretch, as you can tell, towards the sky, we too can grow from our experiences, from our challenges, from these obstacles that may, in many ways, make us feel like we are held back. And those very obstacles, those very experiences, those very challenges help us reach new heights, new heights of understanding, not just ourselves, um, but also understanding compassion and the plight of others. Let's follow the sounds of the birds. Oh wait, they're not birds. I think they're bats. Oh yeah. Let's see, tell me if you can see what they are. Oh, exactly. And that's the one constant they will they can with, even though we may have discovered technology and we may think that we are so smart and resilient, these trees will always outlive us. I think they are bats, TM. I think I've seen, uh, saw one of them and looked like a bat. Let's keep walking on the where the bats are we'll see what we can find and because these trees are so tall it's extremely hard to see I mean so far you can't see exactly what they are I'll just keep following the sounds exactly Kathy it is amazing how straight they are as well like a lot of other trees that bend a little bit and change their shape yeah they are bats i can confirm i just saw a bat so the sounds that we're listening to now are bats look at this stunning oh i love bats yes birds and bats <laughs> the double b's 
And there are bees here as well, so birds, bats and bees. Three bees. Another theme that comes to mind when I explore and, and as we meander through this majestic and inspiring, as we have just established, forest is the importance of community and one of the markers one of the one of the things that really makes me appreciate you all and and value the journeys that we have experienced what really has fueled those journeys and and enhanced and ingested value into them was the community that we have together um, established and brought together um, and I just want to notice a fact, okay? And if we look at these redwoods, we keep looking up naturally because it's mesmerizing how tall they are and how far into the sky they can reach. But another fascinating fact about these redwoods comes from underneath the ground. You see these redwoods, um, the roots of these redwoods, they interlock with the other uh, with the other redwood trees around them and what that does is create a support system and the support system actually helps them remain strong and resilient and and, and it protects them from other external forces other other trees other you know other um uh, natural and it keeps them safe and I, I personally think this is a um, it's a beautiful, beautiful metaphor to illustrate and encapsulate the the importance of um, of community in our lives. And just like the redwoods, you know, we as people we we thrive, we grow, we we remain strong, and we survive for longer when we support each other. You know, when we share each other's strengths and, and, and weaknesses and when we also shoulder each other's burdens together, we become stronger, we become unbeatable. And that's something that we can learn. Birds, bats and bees while admiring the bark. Exactly. Maybe four bees then, Abe. Eh? Bark, birds, bats, and bees. <laughs> and TM saying, love how the lower branches have no leaves. They must not get as much sun, etc. Yeah, that's, that's a very, very fair assessment, TM. Thanks for bringing that up. Exactly, Suzanne. And just like people, they sustain each other. They keep each other alive, they keep each other strong. Just like us, we interlock our arms together, metaphorically speaking, we, we stay united, we stay strong, we, we show support for each other, and, and that keeps us strong, without, and, and it helps sustain us. And Cheryl and Suzanne had the same <laughs> thing to say, which is great. So many lessons to be learned here. Let's see what look at this over there. Every now and then people will come to this forest and build these little huts. Uh, it, it is a form of art. It is something that people love to do uh, to bring a little bit of um, a little bit of artistic value or visual value to, to this forest. So let's just have a look and see what this is. Check this out first. I don't think you can see anything, and neither can I, to be honest. The bats are hiding very well. And frankly, I don't blame them for being so tall up there. It's safe for them. And they can just live, go about their lives without being disturbed. And look at this beautiful work of art. You know, art comes in many forms. Uh, no, not specifically TM. This is, an ab this is not an Aboriginal type hut. It's just, um, there are certain artists who come here and they, they, they collect the, the branches that have 
been scattered over time. And they decide to create uh, something that is reminiscent of a fairy tale uh, hut. And as you can tell, it does look more like something you would find out of a fairy tale. It is quite beautiful. Let's, uh, let's look into, there's like a little hole there. Let's see what's in this hole. It's quite beautiful, isn't it? It does add a, a nice little enchanting element to these forests, without a doubt. Yeah, creating art from nature without having to take anything away from nature. You know, you're not really uh, compromising the resources. You're actually taking from whatever is there and you're just enhancing the resources. Yes, Robin. It's like NTM. Yes, like a giant bird nest. <laughs> exactly. So Suzanne's asking, when people build these huts, do they not interfere with nature? Not quite. It doesn't really because, it, again, they're just collecting these sticks from all over the forest. So at one point there would have been sticks everywhere. They over time collect them, they pile them up, and then they just add, uh, create this little nice, in this case, what looks like a nest. It doesn't really interfere. If anything, I think it enhances the nature because it gives some critters a uh, a place from which they they can find shelter or even hide or from the conditions. If it's very windy and stormy, you know, a little a, a certain animals can hide on, inside these holes. So I think if anything, it enhances nature. It doesn't really interfere. I think it looks it looks nice. It does sort of take away this element of. I'm the first to discover this place because it, it is a reminder that people are there and constantly doing things here, but, but it is nice. It does add another little fairy tale element to it. Look at how still these trees are. They really do encapsulate the art of being present, don't they? I mean, if anything is present and still, it is those trees. Especially in today's world, it's so easy to forget the importance of being present. But you know what, my friends, when you're in this forest, when you're in deep in not only a redwood forest, but a forest, let's head down there. I want to see if there's like another nest over there. When you're in here, it seems like time seems to slow down. And there's something special about that. There's something that we can extract from this feeling, this air that you experience when you're in a forest. Time slows down. Time loses its concepts. And I guess we can learn about this. We can take a leaf, no pun intended, out of the, uh, out of the Redwoods book. You know, standing tall, standing grounded, and just embracing the here and now, despite being grounded, despite everything, just being in the here and now, being present, opening ourselves to the beauty and to the richness of life. It's quite beautiful. Suzanne has a question. Any idea how many redwood trees were planted here? Okay, so um, to, I'll give you, I'll start from the beginning. Um, initially, the, uh, these trees were planted in the early 1930s, okay? And it was part of an experiment uh, to, as I was saying to you before, uh, it was by the Board of Works, and they originally cleared a huge eucalyptus eucalypt forest here, and they wanted to study the effects um, of introducing uh, 
uh, foreign tree species into a into a local environment. Um, how many trees were planted originally? What's that? Oh, there are people over there. So how many? About originally, they planted about one thousand four hundred uh, redwood trees, and yeah. And yeah, so I guess it was a successful experiment, you know. So fourteen hundred, but by now there's plenty more, and, and we're at now because of what happened is the forest dispersed and the trees expanded, and the ones down there are just a lot less symmetrical and they're all over the place. And then if you head down there, which we might actually if we find some time, uh, there are ferns over there. So lots, of, it's like a a bushy area full of ferns uh, so we can check that out as well let's just quickly check this out this nest over there he's around us he's living things, living, ancient, well, they, these guys aren't ancient, but uh, living things that have been around on this earth for so long as, as a species. And then there's also the, uh, the fallen ones, or even the ones that are, yeah, they haven't really succeeded. And it just gives us this, reminds us of the cycle of life. You know, they grow and then some fall, return to the ground. And, and seeing them find their place in a different way. They fall to the ground, then they, they get placed differently. They form a different kind of utility of the forest, in this case by adding a little bit of beauty you know they're not really and look at the light over here I don't know if you can see it with the quality that I'm I can see it at but the light is just stunning coming out the sunlight and again it's amazing what we can learn from these trees resilience community presence These trees are some of the old, oldest living beings on earth. And there is so much they can teach us. So much that is deep and meaningful. This is make me feel this renewed sense of hope and purpose. And in a way, commitment to growth and to... Um, connection and to mindfulness you do feel like you're in a more mindful space when you inhabit this beautiful space I remember you know just like these redwoods never forget just like these redwoods we are stronger together as people as humans we are most productive most effective at our strongest when we work together, not when we fight. Our greatest growth comes from deepest roots. It's quite interesting, isn't it? Let's walk a little bit further. Let's not have a look. Yeah, it certainly is a perfect day to be here today. Let's capture some really nice shots. Exactly, Abe. It's really about the entire experience. The sounds, how the light filters through the trees, no doubt. Ground, but this is so tidy. Well, yeah, they don't... So... There are actually a couple of fallen ones down there, and there have been instances in the last few months of uh, down there. Well, 
We're not going to walk there because there are a few people there. I don't want to be around other people. I want to forget that there are other people here. <laughs> but but there are many instances, there have been a few instances in the last year, which is which have also been a consequence of us not being able to visit it last year because it, um, there, were, there were a few trees that fell as a consequence of uh, natural conditions or whatnot. And they had to shut the entire forest down and remove the trees. So that's usually the process. They'll just shut it down and... and this is a great way to go distinct with how they go about it because it, that, you, know, you just don't really know. They're not very organized. I just wish they told us last time. That would have saved me a two hour drive. It took me two hours to get here, so it would have saved two hours, but it's okay. How beautiful is this? Oh, the signal is buffering. Thanks, thanks Bear. I'll step backwards then. I was actually going to step further into this forest. But if the signal is buffering, then I'm going to... We'll just head down there. Look at this baby redwood. Oh, it's my pleasure, Suzanne. It's my pleasure. I love it. I like, honestly, it's it's nice to be with you guys. You're the perfect company to... You're the perfect company. Look at this baby redwood over here. Hey. Okay. Here's the, the young one. Quite beautiful. Oh, you had some buffering too? Okay, that's fine. I'll look at the tree. I look at the difference between the old and the new. It's quite lovely. Now I say, let's head down there and let's check out the ferns for a moment. But just, I'm just going to be quiet for a few moments because I want to enjoy the whispers of the forest, the sounds of nature. And even the softest rustle of redwood leaves indicate a whisper of longevity and eternity. These giants standing still and firm for centuries and remind us of uh, aspects and facets of our own existence, timeless, timeless aspects of our existence. And when we're here, when we're in the presence of these incredibly beautiful and in some ways immortal um, giants, it just um, invites us to think about the eternal flow of life and love and You know, look beyond the material and and the immediate and soak in what is eternal and meaningful. Soak in the gift of this universe, the gift of nature. Oh, sorry, Natalie. How many kilometers am I? I don't actually know. I don't actually know how many kilometers I'm from Melbourne. Um, yeah, it's a two hour. It's almost two hours. But I don't know how many kilometers I would have seen it, but I just don't remember. Look at this one. Oh, wow. This is sometimes the, the roughest and the spikiest ones are the... Uh, Just like eucalyptus, they all have their different barks, their different forms of expression, 
Look at this one over here. The, the spikes coming out of it. It's beautiful, isn't it? Thanks, Suzanne. It's quite remarkable how, as we step further into this forest, there's a couple running through the forest. I don't know what, what they're up to, up to no good. Well, there's not much we can do about that. And it really does, this whole forest, nature itself, the eternal reminder of where we come from, of our history, really. These trees can teach us a lot about the historical context of the universe. Um, it really does invite us to see ourselves as part of a... Uh, part of a, a greater um, and larger whole that is interconnected with the, the world around us. And you know what, it also reminds me and us that through nature, through nature we can so successfully uh, discover those deeper truths about ourselves. Sometimes all you have to do is head into nature and then look within yourself and, and the answers will be there. Not in books, not on the internet, not through others. You just have to step into nature and let nature propel you, propel um, your intuition to understanding your, yourself a lot better. What is Fatima saying? My reading suggestion by Peter Wallaben, The Hidden Life of Trees, what they feel, how they communicate. Oh, yes, yes, I've heard of that book, Fatima. Yes, I, um, I want to read that book. It, it does sound like a fascinating read, without a doubt, absolutely. Yes, I'll, it's definitely on my list, for sure. For sure, I'll have to download it into my Kindle at some point. Let's head down there. Just let me know again if there's anything. And this is why TM, you can relate to that, and a lot of you can. Hiking, I know you're a big lover of hiking. But hiking is um, one of the most soul nourishing activities we can en enjoy, and uh, as people, really, because we, it does replenish us and afford us an opportunity to, to connect with ourselves, to nourish ourselves, to understand ourselves on a deeper and, and greater level. So, yeah. It's beautiful. Let's head down to the ferns. There's also a very magical element to Fern, fern. Now, yes, uh, yesterday we explored Fern Gully in the uh, Royal Botanical Gardens, but these are more wild like ferns that are naturally grown here in Victoria, Australia. And, and you know what? I, before we step into these ferns, another thought just came to my mind. Moments like these, moments of us coming together and, and enjoying this beautiful, beautiful phenomenon, this magical and enchanting gift, God-given gift. 
reminds me and it can remind us that magic doesn't just exist in fairy tales. It's all around us. It's everywhere. It just needs to be found and seen. We need to open our eyes to it and our minds to it. But it's there. It's there and it's waiting to be seen and it is waiting to be appreciated. But we do live in a modern day fairy tale. Fairy tales are true. And we're witnessing a fairy tale right now. We're witness witnessing the supernatural, if you may, if I may. And yes, TM saying some of them look like they have eyes, undoubtedly. Quite beautiful. The sounds of nature, whispers of the forest. No music could ever beat this. As much as I was wanting to play classical music, believe me, I really wanted to. I had the playlist all prepared, but then when we stepped into that forest and I could hear this, I thought, we just need to enjoy this. Because we can listen to the same classical music over and over, but what we're listening to now will never and can it never be replicated. hundred percent Suzanne I can't imagine anyone not enjoying this you'd have to not be present to not enjoy this now let's step a little bit out of the forest I'm just gonna give you a 360 degree this is where we're at look at the reflection is so beautiful isn't it And I can hear other birds as well amidst the bats. Let's step now. Let's check out some of these ferns. Oh, oops. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, I stepped into a bunch of sticks. The fern forest over there offers a unique magic of its own. Moss. Look at this shot. Beautiful. Let's step a little bit into this fern forest and see what what beauty it may have to offer us. Yeah, I know, Suzanne. I always knew they're noisy, but I never knew they're that noisy. They must be having a party of sorts. Something must be happening there. I don't think it's random. Now, I can't walk through it. You can't see it, but there's a massive spider web that is hot, actually. Oh, actually, I'm surrounded by spider webs. So I'm not going to head down there. We'll see where else we can. I do feel like we're in an adventure and we have to walk through the forest, but we're uh, held back by the webs. And I don't want to interfere with nature. I don't want to interfere with the spiders doing what they do and living their best lives. 
but we can still appreciate this little fern escape for what it is. And I must say that, please correct me if uh, you may disagree with me, but time has absolutely flown. Have you realized that? Can you believe we're almost nearing the end of this? It's been 40 minutes. Personally, I can't. Well, time flies when you're in the presence of, of excellent company. Absolutely gorgeous. I know, Stephanie. Gorgeous. It certainly has, Cheryl. And look, I know that some of you uh, are not big into meditation. I respect that. But if you'd like to join us uh, shortly, I think we'll have a little bit of time, then come join our meditation. We'll be, it'll be a nice, simple mindfulness meditation the sound of nature. I'll find a nice little uh, angle. And we're going to jump straight into the meditation so that, you know, um, we just get started. So feel free to join us if you feel like it. Oh, a thousand percent, Beth. A thousand percent. When you're fully present, it's as if time stands still, without a doubt. Definitely, my friends. It's, honestly, this has been such a, a pleasure, and I've <laughs> you've made every minute of driving here worth it. Honestly, thank you, friends. Like, thank you. Uh, it definitely does uh, has invigorated my soul, and has resurfaced many emotions that um, are positive, of, of course, that have reminded me how beautiful this community is. And yeah, what a treat. You're absolutely welcome. So, thank you, Stephanie. So yeah, I'll find, uh, let me just check what time, uh, well, I'm gonna check to see what time the actual, uh, what time it's on. Let me just check. I think, I think uh, we've got a bit of time. But we'll uh, hopefully see you at the meditation. Now let me just switch to myself, okay? So yeah, thank you. Thank you so much for being here. And uh, again, I'm in awe of how uh, appreciative I am of your, you know, in awe of your, your company and your presence. And uh, in 20 or so minutes, thanks TM, I just don't have my it's on this phone. <laughs> the schedule's on this phone. So, uh, off the top of my head. But yeah, okay, cool, cool. So we've got a bit of time. Uh, I will set up for the meditation. So you can go get yourself, you know, stretch, have a bit of a break in between now and the meditation. And then I will see you at the meditation. Uh, again, I want to thank you very much for bracing me with your, your presence and your company and your positivity and for... Um, enjoying, um, helping me enjoy this as much as I hope you have enjoyed it. So, yeah, appreciate it, friends. This is very unique in itself because I don't think we have had this experience here before. So, and I hope you enjoyed uh, the format that I decided to to trial, which is just exploring the philosophy of being in the redwoods. And yeah, hope you enjoyed it. So, I'll see you very shortly. And. Uh, We'll chat soon. Look after yourselves. Thank you, Fatima. I appreciate it. We'll chat soon.